So I want to talk about the cell membrane more, but focus in on that phospholipid bilayer. So literally just those phospholipids, ignoring the presence of proteins that are so important, but we'll come back to them. Okay, before we, well, in order to talk about the phospholipid bilayer um, properly, we need to review some chemistry terms. Um, so if you remember from chemistry, there's two important terms, hydrophilic and hydrophobic. Hydrophilic is literally means water loving. So these are going to be compounds, um, molecules that can dissolve in water. Um, polar substances, so like glucose, things that have a difference in charge, um, and ions. So sodium chloride, for example, you know, lemonade dissolves in water, lemonade mix, that's salts and sugars. Um, these things do well in water, they're stable and they dissolve. Nonpolar substances are hydrophilic. So this means doesn't, um, afraid of water. So lipids, fat, you know, oil and water don't mix. Um, these are typically long chains of carbon, some substances you know from your everyday life. They don't dissolve in water. They're going to stay separate. Um, they're not stable interacting with water themselves. In our body, phospholipids, um, the tails of the lipids are long chains of carbons and steroid hormones are two um, really common examples in our class of hydrophobic molecules. So when we have our phospholipid, this, these are actually, um, I told you they were hydrophobic, actually not quite true. They're what's called amphipathic. They have a polar head. It's hydrophobic. I'm sorry, hydrophilic and a nonpolar tail that's hydrophobic. So this part is going to be happy next to water. And this part is going to be unhappy next to water. It's a very important property of um, phospholipids that allows them to form bilayers. So why this matters is when we put a bunch of phospholipids in water, is that out of the way a little more? Um, the hydrophobic parts want to avoid being near water. Our cells and our bodies are full of water. It's aqueous environment. So this water we're showing here is outside and inside of our cells, right? So in order to be the most stable, these hydrophobic tails hide from the water. It's most stable if they're away from water. Um, lipid micelles are when there's a single tail our phospholipids in our bodies have two tails. So th this bilayer is what forms when we have um, these phospholipids. Um, in either case, this is a spontaneous process that requires no energy because it's the most stable. This is um, how the first cell was thought to have formed is, is um, by forming a plasma membrane and, and keeping some things out and some things in. Also though, allowing things to cross across the membrane when needed. So remember that um, so some things can cross across the, the lipid bilayer just on their own. Some things are going to need those additional proteins that we're gonna talk about um, separately. So again, just focusing now on what do we want to be able to get in or not. Um, a good analogy is kind of like, like, like a gate. If we've got certain things that can pass through a certain slat of gate, maybe a rabbit can get through our graded gate, but not a fox because it's too big. So size is one thing that's going to matter for what can get through this membrane. This property is called selectively permeable. Whether um, a substance can get through the membrane or not. I forget. This is the kind of picture of what this looks like, this me membrane, when it comes together to form an entire cell. So how do we know what things can get 
through across this bilayer without the healthy membrane proteins. It's going to be things that can get through that hydrophobic portion. So what are these things? Um, small, right? So things that are small and uncharged. Small nonpolar molecules can easily fit in terms of space um, and easily diffuse in terms of their, their energy through the membrane. This means they have high permeability. They can pass through easily. Things down at the other end here have low permeability. They have a lot of difficulty getting through, either because they are large. So also down here would be proteins. Large proteins just can't get through. Too big. And charged ions. So even though they're small, they are very, very charged, right? Na plus, and that's not going to spontaneously move through this hydrophobic core. Some things in the middle are have polarity to them, like water and glucose, but not aren't ions. Um, and glucose is like bigger than water. So small uncharged and large uncharged. And this is a spectrum, right? Um, and so this is called semi-permeable membrane that some things are able to pass through um, more easily than others. So then our bodies can make certain proteins to allow other things in or not. Um, and we can then control what's coming in or out of the cell um, overall to maintain homeostasis. So again, things that can't pass through need a protein. So membrane proteins can actually alter the permeability. And we'll see this um, in action next. First, here's a learning check.